You're listening to the A Bit From Within podcast with Felicia Marty. I have to show up with as, as much as I am right now. And what other people experience from me, it's allowed to be their own journey. I do not have to control whether everyone has had an amazing experience in relationship with me and whatever that means, right? It's like we can all only do the best that we can. Hello there, everybody, and thank you so much for joining me for a new episode of the Epit From Within podcast. I'm Felicia, your host. I am a yoga teacher, meditation teacher, um, self-care encourager, and also a small business owner here in Denver, Colorado. And I am so excited always for this opportunity just to sit down and share a little bit of what's been going on in my world, what I've been feeling, going through, experiencing, thinking about And maybe it'll resonate with a little bit from within you as well. For me, I am actually feeling surprisingly well this morning for a very busy weekend. I had two weddings this weekend. Um, They weren't back to back. I had a day off in between. But um, on my day off in between, I felt like I kind of had a little bit of a crash moment, like uh, not a physical crash, but just kind of a emotional, um, mental crash. And the reason that I share that is because I feel like we're still in this mindset around only sharing what's amazing, this amazing picture of our lives, what's, what, what we define as success or makes us more elevated. And we're so used to only sharing those things and painting that picture. And we don't always have um, strong people who are still grateful people who are still um, successful people or still trying people that are also sharing um, some of their lows. And for me, I think it was... um, just honestly being very tired and some, maybe some chronic stress symptoms starting to show up in my body. And I am trying to have a lot of patience with that and a lot of grace with that. I am, I've always had this experience with uh, my anxiety and this is just a way that anxiety shows up in my body. And it is something that is, that other people experience too. I've done um, quite a bit of research on this, but it's kind of like when you, you yawn, but you like can't catch your full breath. And so like the yawn just feels like it needs to continue and continue. And it can be a little alerting, like, or alarming because it feels like you get kind of shortness of breath or it can cause you to kind of spin a little bit. And I've experienced this before, but lately I've been experiencing it a lot. Like, and it's, I think it's one of those things kind of like, um, once you start thinking about it, once you become very aware of it, then you can start, it can kind of become more of a habit, or at least that's been my experience this week where it's been like every day getting into these moments where I'm just needing to yawn and yawn and yawn. And I'm a big yawner in general. Um, it really is kind of a form of anxiety and also a form of release for me. I've actually had like yoga teachers comment on how often I'm yawning. Um, and I sometimes feel kind of embarrassed about that, but I also like a yawn is a reflex inside of your body. It's not really something that you can control. So in general, I think it's not a good idea to, um, be offended by other people's yawning (laughs) because they can't really control it. It's, I mean, I guess that's different than if somebody is really zoned out or checked out of your conversation and it's, it's different, but you never know what's going on inside of somebody. So anyway, all of that is just to say on Saturday, it was like my third or fourth day of feeling these, this yawning sensation. And I called up my mom and, um, I kind of just started like crying. I'm like, I'm really stressed about this. I'm really worried about this. And she's like, you know why you're yawning? She's like, you're tired. And my first thought was like, no, I'm not tired. I've been getting great sleep. I have no reason to be tired. And then all of a sudden, like it hit me like a a wave crashing in my face. And I was just like, holy shit. I am so tired. I am mentally tired and I am emotionally tired. And even though I have been getting good sleep and I've really been trying to take care of my body, 
I am mentally and emotionally exhausted. And that kind of realization just let me be in my feels a little bit and also just kind of have this moment of graciousness towards myself of like, I just need to sit here on the couch tonight. I need to cry if I need. I need to um, order in some takeout. I need to just chill and relax and try my best to reset. And have also been really trying to work on some breathing exercises just to try to release my diaphragm a little bit and try to reset this pattern of stress. And, you know, this really ties into something that I've just been thinking a lot about is, you know, other other times in my life when I've been extremely stressed out, I feel like it has consumed every single part of my life. Like it has consumed how I'm showing up in relationship, how I'm carrying myself throughout every day, how I am uh, not able to grow as much, like I'm just kind of frozen in stress. And this time, it feels very different because, and like I I've, know I've been talking about this um, over the past couple of weeks, but it's something I'm really trying to process that this time it feels different. Yes, there are some very big stressors. Like everything that Dave and I have been going through has been so stressful, stressful on a new level. Um, and where we're at in our lives with the business and with, um, our, you know, finances and everything like that, like it makes it stressful as well in a very unique way. But at the same time, I do feel as though I am not 100% consumed in that stress all the time. And I think that's kind of why some of these um, symptoms of chronic stress are starting to sneak up on me a little bit and kind of almost catch me off guard. Because in general, I do feel like I'm having good moments every single day where I am taking care of myself every single day, um, where I am having moments to laugh and having moments to feel grateful and having moments to be more present or to journal or to read something or where I am not fixated on work the way that I have been in my past. And I also feel like I'm really growing. I've been, um, you know, just growth is slow. Um, I have to remind myself that because for me, I feel like if I figure something out on a head level, it needs to just be that way. And I need to just get through it as fast as I can, but that's not how growth works. At least for me, there are certain times when everything changes at once, but, but really, as I look back over, you know, my life, it's like growth happens very slowly and trying to really implement the things that I've been thinking about or figuring out on a head level, it takes a little while for me to, to get it down into my heart space and then down into my gut level and like really live it in my body and not just in my mind. And so I feel as though I'm, I'm growing right now. I am starting to see myself through a new lens and really identifying a lot of my um, kind of controlling behaviors. Um, and that's, that's kind of hard to admit as well, because I, I do, I've always known that I'm a little bit of a control freak, but I've always felt it was just in really practical ways and in, in, and in situations where it needed a quick resolution or, you know, just, I always, even though people mirrored that back to me and I accepted it, I was also kind of I guess putting up a little bit of an excuse around the why, right? It was like, well, I understand the why and I'm, I'm trying to be helpful. So yeah, I'm a control freak, but it's fine. But now I'm starting to, to see it in a whole different way where I'm starting to really see the ways that being a control freak or having that kind of controlling part of my personality is actually holding me back And how it's interfering with um, creativity that could be in my life, where it's interfering um, in relationships and, and not in a way that people are mad at me, but just where I'm starting to see that there's a 
lack of potential, like that, that, that me trying to hold on and grip everything is, is not leaving space for other people to contribute or to have ideas or to shine. And so I just, I feel like I'm starting to see things in a new way and I'm, I'm working through it. I'm really trying to catch myself in the moments where I am spinning out or trying to grip too hard or just really struggling to let go. And I'm, I'm working on it. I'll definitely say I'm not perfect. Um, but, but I think that again, going back to what I was trying to say before is that this is why it's so hard for me right now. Like why Saturday snuck up on me so hard is because I'm like, I've held on for this long. I feel like and this is definitely the mind talking, but it's like, I've done all of the right things. I have taken space. I have not been a workaholic. I have let go of things I wanted to control and get done. And instead I've surrendered to the process. I have, you know, just really, really been working on the actions of letting go. And I'm working, I'm also trying to have the feeling of letting go with that. I would say that part is coming later because it's really hard for me, but I'm at least I'm there to the part where I like, I'm actually like facilitating the letting go and, and trying to play catch up as opposed to what I've done in years past, which is not be able to let go and try to control everything and try to be perfect and try to feel like I have it all together. And I definitely don't feel like I have it all together right now, (laughs) but I do feel like I have enough of it together and that I am doing, I know without a shadow of a doubt that I'm doing the best that I can. And I'm really trying to sit with that being enough. And I'm trying to sit with that being enough in all of the ways that I feel a little guilty or I feel behind. And I think in general, I think that's working. You know, I, I definitely have that kind of list going in the back of my head around, oh, I, I let this person down or this person's probably mad at me now because I didn't do this or I didn't show up in this way. Or I maybe, maybe I didn't, you know, teach that yoga class well enough. And maybe I wasted people's time. And then I'm like, no, no, no. Like, I'm really trying to be like, I have to show up with as, as much as I am right now and what other people experience from me, it's allowed to be their own journey. I do not have to control whether everyone has had an amazing experience in relationship with me and whatever that means, right? It's like, we can all only do the best that we can. And for many of us, we care very deeply about our connections with others. We want them to be meaningful. We want them to have an impact. We want people to know. I mean, honestly, I think it it comes down to multiple levels, but we want to be liked, right? We want to be appreciated. We want to be loved. And especially when we are interacting with people that we love and we admire and we are grateful for. Um, And it's, it's hard to remember, like, it's not our job to control that. Like we have to do the best that we can. So this is kind of what I've been working on. I've been really trying to, well, since this kind of crash on Saturday, I've been really trying to honor in my body and in my heart and in my mind that I am very close to the end of, you know, what felt like an impossible task, which was getting through, um, the seven weeks from September to October 21st, beginning of September to October 21st. Um, It's so many weddings, so many projects, so many sessions, so much going on. And I'm definitely feeling it a little bit right now. Like my mind is a little tired. Yesterday I showed up to a wedding and I had forgotten my jacket. And I am so grateful that Dave was able to come up and put one in my car, sneak one in my car for me, because as soon as that sun went down, it was so cold and I would have been, oh, I would have been in some trouble without that jacket. Um, so it worked out okay, but I was like, I forgot my jacket. It's just been for, a little bit of forgetfulness, a little bit of um, it, not even foggy in like a, a tired way. Cause that's the thing is like why this yawning feels so 
frustrating is because I don't feel physically tired. Um, I am definitely starting to feel the mental tiredness, but I'm also trying to stay grateful. Like there, there are plenty of good things going on right now. And, um, you know, this, this whole year, it just feels really strange. I was talking to, um, a guy at a wedding last night. Um, and we were, we were just talking about like this year, you know, 2020 was a really hard year, but in a way it felt like we were in this cocoon and then 2021 started and it's like our cocoon of hardship kind of exploded. And you can really feel that we are all going through so much change right now. And change is happening, I think, on personal levels for many, many of us. Um, But change is also happening on this global level. And it's really interesting because this month we actually have four different planets that have been retrograde over the course of the summer um, that are starting to move direct. So we had Pluto move direct, we're having Saturn return direct, Jupiter, and then also next week we have Mercury turning direct. And so there's a lot of this energy where things have been kind of on hold that's going to be starting to move forward. And I feel like you can feel this in kind of like the undercurrent of the universe right now, um, where it feels like a lot is kind of like, we're kind of holding our breath, but we're also like ready to let go. And there, we need some momentum. We're ready for change. And it's, it's one of those things where it's almost like This reminds me of something that happens astrologically with the lunar cycles, where we kind of expect in a logical or rational way that a new moon would happen at the beginning of the month, and then it would kind of give us this time to like move through the peak cycle and then start to wind down and kind of start to let go and then reflect and reevaluate towards the end of the month and then be able to start again. But it it doesn't always happen that way, right? Sometimes the new moons happen in the middle of the month. And so you're kind of, in one way, you're trying to think, okay, it's a new month or new week, new year, new me, you know, like that kind of mentality. But, and then same thing with this. It's almost like all of these planets are stationing direct right as we're going into this period in the Northern Hemisphere where we're starting to yes, change is happening. Yes, transformation is happening, but we're also moving into the darkness. We're also moving into the period of winter, of stillness, of um, death and transformation and stillness to have time to really reflect, right? And so it's a little bit awkward in a way because we also want to take advantage of the momentum, And I I think it's so interesting when we look at nature because it's really like there are new cycles happening all the time and we really have to kind of find the balance between how do we hold space for the season that we're in and also hold space for all of the change that we need or the transformation or the new growth that we're also working on. And I, I think it's all just a really good reminder that nothing happens how you think it's going to happen or how it would look nice on paper, right? We have to kind of pace ourselves as we can. And this is something I've been really trying to work in my life right now. I think it's, it's actually been very helpful is just trying to show up for whatever I can and the best ability I have in that moment. So Saturday, I felt like there was all this work that I needed to get in But I knew I could not show up and do that work, even on the back end, even emails or editing a gallery or anything like that, and have it be good for me. And if it wasn't going to be good for me at all, like it would probably not be my best work either. So it would probably not be good for my client. Um, And then there are other times when I get three weddings edited and an entire album designed and in a couple days. And it just feels like it's just flowing through me. And I'm really trying to be in that space where it's like, granted, you're not always going to feel like doing what you have to do. Right. We all know that we all have those moments of like, do I have to go to work? Do I have to go 
outside to walk the dog? Do I have to do that? Like we all have moments of like, I don't feel like it, but there are, and, and sometimes we just have to work through that. Like, I'm not going to say you're always going to feel inspired, but I, I guess what I'm trying to get at is like, sometimes you can find yourself in a flow where you're just moving from one thing to another and the task that you're working on, whether you really want to do it or not, at least it feels right. At least it feels like you can show up for it and do it or even get something from it, right? Like I'm usually on dog duty in the evenings and Dave takes the morning shift and So every time I I take the dog out at night, like sometimes I don't want to, sometimes I have to take him out after I just got out of a bath and I'm all warm and I don't want to go outside or I don't want to get in my sweatpants or I'd rather just be in my pajama shorts or things like that. Um, and now we're entering that time of year where I'm going to have to be wearing the coat and the hat and the Ugg boots and all of the things just to, to take him outside. But I've really tried to get into this, um, this idea of like, well, what can this moment bring me, right? Like there are certain times when it'll be a chance for me to actually just connect with the moon. Like I'll go outside and I'll, I'll see in the new moon in the sky or, or not see it. Um, or I really appreciate like the crescent shape of the moon and just reflect on that. Sometimes I'll just, as I'm out there, just like really focus on feeling like the cold air against my cheeks. Um, in the summer, I would go out barefoot and just feel my feet against the concrete and really just try to let each thing that I'm doing serve me in return and and try to let the universe take care of me as well. And it's really hard. Like I said, I, I know I'm, I'm definitely not doing it perfectly. I uh, And I... I guess the reason I feel compelled to say that is because of just feeling these little bits of breaking down, right? Like the crying, the yawning, the forgetfulness, um, the kind of emotional moodiness to just feeling very, very overly emotional. Um, But there's, you know, it's, there's nothing wrong with that, right? It's like, I don't have to sit here and actually criticize myself for not being perfect when I'm really just being human. Um, but I, but I know I'm not doing it perfectly because I'm not a perfect human being and I am okay with that. Or I'm, I'm at least I'm really trying to accept that. And I know that so many of you out there are also wrestling with that. Like so many of us just want to feel safe and secure and, and so many of us don't, right? So many of us are struggling with the anxiety and with the um, underlying undercurrent of all of this change in a way and and things that we just don't feel safe, don't feel safe in our world, don't feel safe um, for whatever reason. Maybe we can't even put our finger on it. That's something I've been thinking about a lot too, is like sometimes I just can't even describe what it is. But I think we all just have to honor the fact that like we've all been through a lot this past couple of years. Um, and, and it's probably going to continue. And we've lost a lot. You know, that's something I've also been spending a lot of time thinking about is just how much has been lost. People, businesses, places we love to go, places we love to share, jobs, you know, it's part of change is loss. And it's really, really hard. And it's okay to be in the sadness of it or in the grief and it's also okay to set your sights on what could be next and and where where you're going to carry on through it. <sighs> That's a lot, isn't it? Um well you guys, that that is all I have today. I know this is a little bit of a shorter episode. Um but as I work through this very busy time in my business, I also know that as I start to wrap this up, I'm getting towards a space where I'm going to have more time and energy to really get into a bit from within and hopefully have a bunch more interviews on the podcast, have some really good long episodes, ones that connect with blog posts, um, just, you know, the work that I love to do some great new yoga classes and meditations, and maybe even, a am trying to um, put together right now, like something for November, like a gratitude series, but a really cool one. So 
stay tuned and thank you for um, holding space for me to be me. You know, I don't, obviously, I don't know that you're doing that consciously, but I feel like you are um, as I show up and just try to be my real self. So um, I did pick out a old, but I haven't used it in a while deck, the Affirmators Love and Relationships deck for our card drawing today. Um, as I was doing some organizing in my office this weekend, I was like, oh, this is the deck we need to use this week. So let's just shuffle up the cards here and see what we get. Humility. I take a deep breath and release all of my desire to be right. Without right, what's left? A soft and pliable version of me that's willing to make mistakes, hear other people's opinions, and try doing stuff a different way. In other words, I get to take a pretty sweet, all-inclusive brain vacation. <laughs> Do you guys feel like if I would have read that at the beginning that I would have had a whole different word for today's episode? Um, gosh, that's exactly it. Like I, this one card just summarized where I'm at right now is learning a huge piece of humility, like being served a piece of that humble pie, right? Because with everything I'm going through, it's just like, I am not always right. And I am making some mistakes and I'm doing the best that I can. And, um, there are other ways of doing things. And when I let other people do them, then I also get to take that brain vacation, which is what I need a little bit. So how many of you are feeling that too? It's a really good reminder, isn't it? Um, so I guess with that, may you be humble. May you surrender control. Um, and may we all just remember that we're not in this alone. We've got each other and we're all going through something. All right, everyone. Thanks so much again for joining me today and until next time.